or what you'll see me do in the hospital, if you need an IV site, patient just got in, or you need a new IV, so you're gonna get all the supplies. So we always use an IV start kit. Then we can get an extension tubing. So this is what acts adds some length to the actual IV. Then you need your actual angiocat. So this is a 24 gauge. Now when you talk about needles, what's the biggest difference between a 20 and a 24? Which one's bigger? The 20. 20. The 20. So 20 is for blood. So you, for if you're going to um, give blood, your nurse has to start a 16, an 18, or 20. You cannot use a 24, 22 because blood is very thick and it'll take a really long time and it'll be hard to get through the actual angiocat. So 20 is really big. If you don't have to give blood, don't use a 20 because that's going to hurt. It's really big. All right, so they're going to get everything after the nurse's assessment. They have a doctor's order. They're going to ask, okay, what hand do you prefer? Patients, I have a lot of them are good historians, and so you want to ask them, okay, um, where do you normally get an IV site at? What, what are your good sites? And they can tell you. And you kind of want to go based on what they tell you. And then also you want to go by their hand dominance. Now, if by chance there, you don't see any veins in that arm, then you just have to go to the arm that you do see access in. And then what I always do is put on, so I put on gloves then. Okay, so the ones in the hospital, they should, when they go in, you should have a little button that clicks. This just goes in, so I'll show you how to use all right, so they put a tourniquet on. What's the purpose of the tourniquet? Hmm? Well, to occlude, but what else are you trying to do? Yeah, get the veins to expose themselves. So you don't want to leave it on forever. I've seen that. I've, I've, uh, I've been told nurses to just have left them on. I've been told nurses have left them on. So you never want to leave a tourniquet. And you put the tourniquet close to where you're going. So if you're going to go in a cube, if that's the site you're going for, then you're going to go on the upper arm. If you're going to go in hand, then you can move it down to the forearm. So you go in proximity to where you're going. So I'm going to go for one of these because that's where it is on the, the mannequin. So you put your tourniquet on. Okay, and they can rub and massage, pat, tell them to make fists. Still don't say anything. You could dangle the extremity. All right, so then after you see, okay, this is a good site. Some nurses, they will then loosen this and then get everything ready. So in the kit, you have a cleansing swab, you have a tape of, uh, roll of tape, and then you have your actual tegaderm. And then you have some two by twos to control bleeding. All right, so with the tape, So nurses, they're going to take the tape, they're going to split it in half, so you're going to see them do all this. And you're like, what are they doing? And this is so they can all anchor the or the angiocast. All right, so they do all this. All right, so then they come back. Okay. Then they take the scrub, and they're going to scrub for 30 seconds, and they're cleaning the site that they're going to go for. And they're talking to the patient, how was your day? Have you had IV6 before? Hopefully this will be the only one you have to do today. And then I'm going to connect you to some blood, because you need some blood. So you're doing this for about 30 seconds all around. All right, then you're going to let that air dry. So while it's, it's air drying, you don't want to do this because you can you can introduce stuff to the site. So then you're just talking to the patient again. You're making sure you have all your equipment and everything. 
Some nurses may clean first and then set up. So it's all on you. If the vein is well exposed and you don't need a tourniquet, then don't put it on. If you don't need it, because some people have really good veins and are superficial. If you don't need it, don't cause undue pain of numbness and tingling. Because it is, it is sort of irritating when your extremity gets numb. All right, so you just let it, um, let it dry. All right, and then you just check your needle. You want to make sure the bevel side is up. So it's like at an angle. So you want to make sure it's up. You go in at a 15 degree angle or less. You don't go in at a 90 degree angle. Because then you're going to go in way too deep. And that's going to hurt. And I'm left handed. So you would just come over. And if it's an elderly patient, they have a lot of loose skin, you want to hold the skin taut. Okay? And then you go at the site. And then you're going to go in. And you should see a flash. And you see my little flash of blood there? Mm -hmm. When you do that, and then all you do is push that forward. It's a two-hand thing that you got to just figure it out. And then you're going to hold for blood. Now, how do I get rid of this needle, Sevlin? Because I don't see a... <laughs> no, not that. Oh. No, there's supposed to be yeah. a little release. Yeah, there's no release. Yeah, because this doesn't have a... But I'll just drop it in here. All right, so when you hold pressure for a vein, you hold below because what do veins do? Huh? They bring them back. They bleed, but which way do they go to the heart? Back up. They go up. So if I hold the vein here, it's just going to drip. You hold it down here, it'll stop the dripping because you're stopping the blood because blood is going up. So for a vein, you must hold pressure below. An artery, you hold pressure below. Now, I, and then I have this, and I forgot to prime this, because you're going to prime this. Yeah. And my patient's bleeding out. That wouldn't normally happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can prime that. So before, the nurse. Which one it is? Yeah, it oh, stopped. It's fine. It stopped. And you clean this with alcohol, and then you're going to screw this on, and you're going to prime your extension tubing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was supposed to be done beforehand, right? Yes. Right. Yep. And then what happens with all this tape? So all this tape, what happens is they go underneath. Can we leave? Yep, you can release. And they do that. They chevron it. Chevron. Chevron. So you go underneath and you create a V. And then you go across. And then you can go across again. And then what they do is take the big one. And on this, it has to be put your date and initials. So you're going to put this. You don't want to cover that up because what if you have to take off the extension to finagle the needle because it's clogged or anything? So you just go above. All right, then your date and time, put your initials, and then this goes on here. Then what they do, another piece of tape, they can loop this around and then tape it like that. Now this is considered a hemlock. So now germs can't just flow in. This is a one-way, This is a, it's a two-way valve because you can pull fluid out and you can also, also push it. So whenever you connect to this, you must clean this with alcohol. Some hospitals, they may change this valve every day. So that way, it decreases the bacteria. So once you have an IV site, then you can connect to your IV fluid. All right, so now let's say you have your IV site. So your nurse started your IV site for you. Now you need your fluid. So you have normal saline. You have an order to give it. So what supplies do you need? What supplies do you need for to... Um, Administer your IV infusion. No, 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 no. Nope. So we're giving fluid now because we already have this. So you have your doctor's order and it says to give normal saline, 125 milliliters per hour. Okay, you got the bag, you got the tubing. Okay, bag and tubing. So someone hand me a uh, bag and tubing.
All right, so.